Welcome back everyone to Getting In, a college coach conversation. Um, we're talking all things middle school today because middle school is the foundation for high school, which in turn is the foundation for college. So that's how we roll today. Um, I'm excited to have two people who have either had a middle schooler in their home recently or currently have a middle schooler in their home. They also happen to be colleagues of mine and former uh, admissions officers, Kimberly Aselta, formerly of Babson and Holy Cross, and Mary Sue Yoon, formerly of Barnard College and Whittier Colleges. Welcome, ladies. How are you? Good. Thank you, Beth. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for joining today. So middle school, it's it, as I, I kind of acknowledged at the beginning of the show that it feels a little odd to be in the context of a of a podcast about getting into college talking about middle school. But um, I do think that this is where in many cases, I mean, it really is right. The groundwork for high school is laid in middle school. I, I, I was thinking earlier today when I was thinking about doing this segment about how when my own son went somehow like he got all the way through elementary school and it was still just this kind of like fun thing he was doing i i don't know it just didn't seem like super it's not that it didn't seem important but it didn't seem really serious it didn't seem very connected to the work that i was doing every day and now then when he went to middle school i thought oh all of a sudden we got into like the more important part of college of school like, when did that happen? And so I suspect that many parents may feel similarly that, um, you know, if they haven't been thinking about it all that much or that worried about it, when middle school hits, that tends to kind of ratchet things up a little bit. So um, I thought we could start by talking about academics. And, um, you know, Kimberly, from your perspective, what are some of the most important things that you're asking students or parents should be keeping an eye on academically in middle school? So I think a couple of things. Number one, that they're exploring all different areas of academics. I mean, I think the curriculum is pretty much set up to allow them to do that anyway, but letting them explore and see what they enjoy and get engaged in class. Um, what I noticed with one of my people who live in my home <laughs> when they <laughs> were in middle school, all of a sudden homework became an important part of the grade. And that was something that even at, given what I've been doing for the last 20 years, realized I hadn't really had that conversation with him about it's performing in class and it's getting ready for quizzes and exams and doing projects, but how important homework was. So I think and as we think about academics and they start to actually get real grades and there might be quarters or semesters that happen all of a sudden seem to matter in middle school, homework became a really big thing in my house as we thought about academics and the importance that it played in grades. Mm -hmm. So that was something yeah. that was I think a surprise for my students, I think can sometimes be a surprise for parents. And all of a sudden that changed. No longer were the little folders of stickers and smiley faces coming home from middle school, but now these were real grades yeah. that felt like they meant something. And I know we'll talk a little bit about that today too, but right. you know, all of a sudden grades and academics seem to feel more important. I, personally, to answer your question, I think it's really important for them to explore, but homework impacts those grades. And I think we're gonna talk a little bit too about what those grades can then mean for the future in ninth grade. Right, right. Well, speaking of that, Mary Sue, um, one of the things that came up when we were planning for this was um, there are a couple of areas of academics in which you're going to be on a track. So maybe you could talk to us a little bit about those two areas. Right. Absolutely. So I think in, you know, generally in most middle schools, there's going to be sort of those core courses. English and history and math and science, and sometimes world language. Um, and those will start in the middle school year. I mean, these students have been doing them since elementary school, but they'll sort of start as distinct classes in the middle school years, and some of that tracking starts. Um, the real differentiation in the tracking, though, I think happens most in math classes and sometimes mm -hmm. world language classes in a way that can impact what classes they may be able to take in high school. So there's gonna be a standard track which most students go through and, and then are well prepared to go on to high school. But if your student is, for example, more advanced in math, they may be offered an opportunity to take a higher level math class that might 
bump them up a level in math um, for their high school math sequence. And I think mm -hmm. one of the things is I talk to families who are making that transition from middle school to high school that they don't realize is that the actual math sequence for high school starts with middle school preparation. Um, and that sort of the, the typical student uh, might be taking something like algebra one in the eighth grade uh, and then geometry in the ninth grade, algebra two in the 10th grade, pre-calculus in 11th and then calculus in 12th grade. That's sort of a typical honors student kind of track. Right, more advanced. Student who's, right, yeah. yeah, honor student. Um, mm -hmm. If you have a student who's maybe struggling with math, maybe they don't take that Algebra one class until ninth grade, and that's mm -hmm. okay, but it might mean that they don't get quite as far in the math sequence, so they might end with pre-calculus uh, in 12th grade. Um, and if you have a student, and this is a really small percentage of students, I always want to stress that, but yeah. a really small percentage of math whizzes might get even more advanced than that, where they take their geometry class uh, in the eighth grade and then are moving on to algebra two and the, the full sequence um, in high school. So uh, it's a good idea to kind of look at what your, your middle school tracking is and how that relates to the high school tracking. Um, if math is, is something that you, know, you wanna know more about. Um, the other one that can sometimes be impacted by middle school choices is the world language sequence. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a student can take a world language in not every middle school offers the same world languages or, or offers them for as many years. Um, but if a student takes a world language uh, in say the seventh and eighth grade or sixth, seventh and eighth grade, and then wants to continue in that world language in high school, uh, they might be able to start at a more advanced level in high school. Others might move to a different uh, mm -hmm. language. My uh, older daughter, who is now in college, she was in Spanish in middle school. And then when she got to high school, there's an opportunity to take Latin. So she took Latin when she uh, went to the high school. And so there was a switch for her. Um, but she started then at Latin one in ninth grade, as opposed to continuing on in Spanish at a higher level. Um, my younger right. daughter started Spanish in middle school, continued in Spanish now in, in high school. So she started her Spanish track in high school at a higher level and uh, will right. reach a higher level eventually. All right. What's interesting to me about that piece with world languages is again, if, you know, and this is, we do encourage students to stick with the world language for all four years of high school. Not every student is going to. Um, Latin is typically something that doesn't start before, sometimes it does, but it's much less mm -hmm. common, right, from Latin to happen in middle school. And therefore, Latin, there is an AP level Latin, and usually you can reach that after in your fourth year, whereas in Spanish and French, that AP level typically comes in the fifth year. So in order to achieve the AP level, you have to have started it in, in middle school. So there are a lot of different considerations. Um, again, you might have a student that is never going to hit that AP level, totally fine. You may have a student that is gonna look to max that out because they love the world language. And just understand that when you make a switch from middle school, if it's a, if it's a language that's been offered to other middle schoolers, they're going to start a little bit behind the students who are in that class in mid or in that language in middle school. So, mm -hmm. um, Kimberly, earlier you mentioned uh, that we're going to get back to this this concept of like the real grades, but you know there is, um, and you were going to add on to that. So now is probably a good yeah. time for that. Let's go back to the whole concept of grades and how meaningful and not those can be at this age. I, I think of middle school as the dress rehearsal for yeah. high school, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's okay if things aren't perfect, if things are less than perfect, if things maybe aren't going well in one of their classes or a couple of their classes. We had to have a conversation in our house about understanding percentages and that homework is a is 20% of your grade and is zero can have a really big impact yeah. versus a 40 or a 50 even, right? Yeah, so yeah. really helping them to understand that. And, and what I think most of us and most parents struggle with is really providing that balance. We want them to do well. We want them to learn. We want them to engage, but also this pressure of 
getting straight A's in middle school. That would be great. And it would be particularly nice in math, right? So that we can make sure mm -hmm. that maybe if we have those stronger math students that they're going to be recommended for those higher level or honors courses. But at the end of the day, high school or middle school is about learning to engage in the classroom, learning to manage your homework, learning what classes you like or you have the skills or the strengths in. And the grades are less important if we think about our jobs on the college admission side, right? right. So yeah. really very much the dress rehearsal to have everything laid in place so that they can hit ninth grade running. That's right. And, and I'm gonna, the subtext that I'm getting from this is you can let your kid fail at this stage, yeah. right? Absolutely. And Mary Sue, I don't know if you have anything to add on that yeah. piece of it. Yeah. Uh, I have some friends who are, are middle school teachers, um, bless them, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> because I think it's like a hard age range to deal with on a daily basis. Yes. Um, and, you know, what they always tell me is that you, this is a time to, to let those natural consequences come into play and ha have the student make that step towards independence, have them have some accountability. So if they don't turn in mm -hmm. that homework, they might get that zero and that might impact their grade overall. And, and that's okay. I think learning that lesson in seventh grade, eighth grade is much better than learning that lesson in 11th grade or 12th grade from a college admission yes. standpoint. You know, learning um, how to study, learning sometimes how to push the boundaries and sometimes fail in pushing those boundaries. Uh, I think these are good lessons to try and impress uh, upon your student when when they are in middle school, because ultimately, as Kimberly mentioned, those grades aren't really carrying forward with them into their high school uh, right. transcript. It's not carrying through into their admissions decision for the most part. So, um, you know, that's I think it's a good time to try out some things, even if those things don't succeed. It's good to learn those lessons when there's less risk. Right. I'm going to throw a curveball because we did not talk about this, but can we talk about power school? Have you guys had, do you guys have power school in your, your um, districts? Something similar. Yeah. Okay. Similar. And okay. So for the listeners who are like, what's power school? A, yay, yay, yay. You have no idea what I'm talking about. And that's good for you because I would say that power school is the devil. Personally, it was such <laughs> a terrible thing for me. And I think Jack, if he were here, would say, yes, I hated power school. Um, but it basically is this way in which parents can um, go online and see exactly what the student is doing and what grades they're getting on their homework, what grades they've gotten on the mm -hmm. most recent tests. And while it's a nice snapshot into what's happening, you really have no idea how updated it is. Um, some teachers are much better about keeping it updated than others are. And it was the source of an incredible amount of agita in my <laughs> house for me and then in return for my child. Um, uh -huh. And so I, there were definitely, Jack was one of those students, sorry, Jack, I'm diming you out here, but he <laughs> needed to fail a little bit in middle school. Um, and I made a deal with him. Power school was such a devil for us that I actually made a deal for, with him when he went on to high school that I was not gonna get into power school. I was not gonna log in or have access to it, provided that everything was going well. You know, like as we had agreed to, we talked about expectations, doing homework, doing this, doing that. And if he had held up his eye under the bargain, I would stay off of power school. Mm -hmm. um, I needed middle school to learn that. I did yeah. stay off power. It all ended up fine. We did have a rocky ninth grade, but ultimately it all. So I learned yeah. two things. One is like, I can't do it for him. I've already gone to college. I've already gone to high school. I've already gone to middle school. I don't need to do this work as a parent. Hello. But also there are some tools that are available to you that you might want to use sparingly. And I don't know if either yeah. of you have anything to add about those. Yeah. We made the same deal with my ninth <laughs> grader that you made. Okay. I said, you're in ninth grade. I'm out. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking at this power school anymore. And it caused, especially with my oldest, 
a lot of fights when he was in seventh mm -hmm. grade and eighth grade, because yes. as you said, you go in at the end of a school day and you you have an F in math. Why do you have an F in math? And it's just because <laughs> the one test that is a hundred percent of the grade right now hasn't been, hasn't been graded. Um, right. But it did help us is he was someone with the homework um, issues mm -hmm. that you could go back and say, you ha you're missing a homework assignment from three weeks ago. And we really had a lot of conversations with him about being a self-advocate. And he would say, well, it was three weeks ago and I don't know what it was. And I, I would say right here, it's unit two, page three, six, you need to I'd write it down on a sticky note. And I'd say, go talk to the teacher about this. And in some, mm -hmm. some cases, the teachers would say, you were, you, we'll allow you to get half credit for doing it. Mm -hmm. Other times they would say no, but there was a lot of lessons thanks to that program that we were able to say, you need to email the teacher, you need to get to the teacher and get that grade up or figure out what's going on there. But that daily checking, my, sev my, my current seventh grader wants me to check every day and we can't be doing that because that's... <laughs> I love that he wants you to. Was he not paying attention to what happened? He listened to what was going on with his brother and he sort of feels like he's got it all. And he's got it. it. I love it. Mary Sue, how about you? Any experiences? Yeah, yeah I think, you know, it's, sometimes it's called Genesis or Skyward. So there's other programs other than Power School. But um, I think the, the important part that Kimberly just said there is that's an, a time to empower your student to go talk to the teacher rather than you as a par parent stepping in and talking to the teacher. Um, yeah. and because that's a great growth moment in middle school for them to do that. Yes, I think that's a really good point. All right, we are going to take a very quick break. And when we come back, we just have more to talk about when it comes to our middle schoolers. So don't go away.